Hey up and welcome to another episode of Last Cast. Today we're back on the Battiford Canal, just a bit nearer the marina this time. And basically we're going to try and keep it really simple today. Just going to fish chop worm and casters and hopefully we'll see if we can get a few, few perch, maybe the odd little chub if we're lucky. Let's get this rig in position. So we've been fishing so far for about an hour and a half. And it took us about sort of half an hour to, to get our first bite where we caught a couple of little chub and then we caught a couple of little perch as well. And I've just had a slightly better one there, about sort of five, six ounces. But basically what I've decided to do today is fish this peg where I can get quite easily to some features across from the, um, from the peg that I'm sat on today. There's plenty of boarding. It's like a bit of a walkway just under the bridge. And it means that I've got plenty of, of um, cover for the fish to fish to and plenty of features. So hopefully that's where we'll get a few few uh, perch shoaling up. Now what I've decided to do today to keep it um, fairly simple is I've just set up a couple of light rigs um, but we won't go into detail with those because because I've had the, the couple of sort of small chub today so far. I don't think it's worth fishing those at all. I, I think I'll probably just get bitted out on those. So I'm just going to concentrate on my two worm rigs that I'm fishing which are quite, quite sort of heavy rigs. I've got decent hooks on sort of size 14s, but I'll run that past you in a bit more detail once I've, uh, once I've brought the rig in. But my plan of attack today, just had an indication there. There we go, that's the fish on. My plan of attack today is basically feeding three lines all to the, the stanchion across. Which my, my line of thinking basically is that with perch, you'll get a run of sort of three or four of them off a line. And then that'll, that'll spook the small shoal that's sort of built up. So I don't want to just fish one line and feed it really heavily. What I'm trying to do is basically give the fish a few little areas that they can go to. I'll just swing this one in. So it gives them the option basically of moving up and down those stanchions there. So I've, I've split the lines to, to a couple of features. They're probably about five, six metres apart, each of the three lines. And what I'm going to do is basically try and pick a couple of fish off each and then move on to the next one. So to start off with, all I've done is put in probably, I'd say about 100 mil of chopped worm and caster on each of the three lines, just because I didn't want to push the peg too much to start with. And then my second top up feed, after I've had, I'd say those small chub, I've decided to feed it a bit heavy, so I've, a bit heavy, so I've put twice as much bait in and a bit more hemp as well. Now the hemp I'm putting in purely just in case um, a few bigger roach or chub move into the peg. But the bulk of the feed is basically is pretty much neat chop worm. Again, not too many casters because there's quite a few small fish in this section. So I'm chopping the worm pretty pretty coarse, probably three quarters of an inch, maybe an inch long in, in sections and just feeding that. And what I'm going to do is feed all three lines at the same time and try and keep fairly regimented in when I feed. So. Once bites tail off or I feel like I've caught as many perch as I can to draw fish back in, then I'll top up each of the three lines and then continue to rotate them. So then another bite there. So I say it's probably taken about 10 minutes since the top up feed for me to start getting bites on this line. But as I say, I've fed all three lines at the same time. So the two lines that, are, that I'm fishing that are sort of 11 meters out from the bank probably fishing about six inches from the or less from the um, from the boarding they're exactly the same depth so i can just basically pick up the rig drop it in one side and then drop it in the other so it, it means i can rotate a lot quicker the other line i fed's a bit further down to the left where it's about a foot shallower so i've got a different rig set up there and that's at 13 meters but again the rigs are, are identical got decent bristles on them dotted well down i'm fishing them both about sort of four inches over depth something like that and hopefully it should be quite a simple day's fishing again normally when i'm fishing the canal i'll, I'll put in a chop worm line or two and have a, a ground bait line to fish but what we're doing today is just focusing on the chop worm and caster side of the fishing as i've said i don't think it'll be there'll be so much caster fishing purely because of the the stamp of the small fish that are in the peg, so I'm not going to lose feed. It's an option that I gave myself, but so after catching one or two of those smaller chub, I think the best way is just big potting, worm and castering, 
with a bit of hemp on each line. So again, I've had that, I've basically had two fish on that, that right hand line, one before we started filming and then that perch, and I've had, had another indication, then not another bite. So straight away, I'm going to go onto the left hand of the, the 11 meter lines and see if anything's cropped up there. So a little indication as soon as that's gone in. So in terms of the bait tray today, it's, it's quite simple. I've probably got a kilo, a kilo and a quarter of dendrobinas, which is going to be the bulk of the feed, and I will use them on the hook as well. I've probably got a pint or so of castor. Again, I'm not going to feed tons of that, and about a pint or so of hemp. And I've also got 20 lobworm as well, so if, if it turns out that there's quite a few small perch in the peg, or I feel especially later on that I can, I've got a better chance of catching a bigger one, so it's say a two pounder or, or bigger in here, that you know there's quite a few in here. That's when I'll go and switch to a lobworm as a hook bait. Again, there's not a lot of finesse to this style of fishing, purely because of the size of fish that you're targeting. So, decent hooks, as I say, 14s hooks. I've got them set on a 12 fluorocam, which would be plenty strong enough for what we're likely to hook today. We're not likely to encounter carp or any sort of really big chub. There's another indication there. And then the main lines, I've got a row 16, so nice and strong, just in case we do go, you know, like I say, we're fishing right up to the stanchion, so in case there's any risk of um, the fish sort of going under there, at least the main line's going to be strong enough to cope. Then in terms of the elastics that I've got, I've just got an 8 to 12 hollow in both of them on a puller kit. As I say, I'll run that through in a little bit more detail with regards to what I'm doing with the elastic when, when we get another fish and I bring the rig in. Also got the option to stay fishing down to my near side as well, so that might be a line that I employ a bit later on, is fishing pretty much next to where the camera is, just on a top kit in one, because there's a little bit of streamer weed down there, and that could always give us a chance of a, a fish or two later on if the, if the perch, say, aren't, aren't sitting comfortably against the stanchions on the far bank. There's another bite there. It's one of the big things, especially when you're fishing with big hook baits like worm like we are today. It's making sure we've got a nice big hook on, but when we do get a bite, I'm letting the bites develop because we perch quite often they'll they'll pick up the bait and they'll move around or move the bait around a little bit, but you want them to try and take that bait down just enough. And again, it's something that I'll run through when I bring the rig in. Is how I hook the worm. Basically, it's just to give myself as much chance of hooking the fish as possible, so there's plenty of hook point showing. And then there's no risk of the um, the worm doubling over the hook point. But what I'll do is, once the float goes under, I'll give it probably one or two seconds, and then I'll try and set the hookers hook home. Obviously, with fishing for, for perch, they do have quite bony mouths, so what I prefer to do is fish a slightly lighter gauge hook, and then give it a really good strike when you do get a bite. So what I'm also doing as well is lifting and dropping the bait quite regularly. Again, quite often it just entices the perch to have a snatch at the bait and they, they do prefer to, to watch a moving bait. If the canal today was more coloured, I'd be less likely to move the bait around, I'd probably leave it a bit more, but with it being very clear today, I want to give the perch plenty of um, opportunity to look at the bait and see it moving. Again, it can just sort of spur them into taking the bait and snatching at it. I'll just rotate the lines again. I've had one indication on that left hand line, but it seems like there's, after that last top up, there's more fish on the right hand line here. So if I don't get a bite, then I'll add another section, switch the rigs over, and I'll go to the 13 metre line to my left. And there we go, that's the fish on.
And the indication I'm getting on this 13 metre line is if it's from smaller fish. It's a nice little perch this time. But while I've got the, uh, the rig out of the water, I'll just show you what I'm using at the moment. As you can see, there's a hook bait on this one. I've just tried two sections of worm. That's, that's worked that time. The rigs, as I say, I've got two identical set up. Um, just as you can see, there's a difference of about a foot in depth from my 13 metre line to my 11 metre line where I'm fishing this one, which is probably about four and a half foot deep, something like that. But both rigs exactly the same, as I say, they've got 14s, uh, Tubertini Series 18 hook on the um, on the bottom there. Nice light wire gauge hook, but really strong. And as I say, nice square point as well. It's what I use for a lot of my bream fishing, but equally I find them ideal for perch as well. They'll take a, a half a lobworm quite comfortably that, or a couple of bits of dendra being the light. So, as I said, that's tied to O12 fluorocarbon, which breaks at about two pound, but realistically you can, you can land perch to sort of three pound on that, or even big chub as well. So I've got no sort of issues with fishing any heavier than that. 016 main line and then in terms of the shotting on both rigs I've just got number nine shots spaced out in the bottom third of the rig in this case with it being a 0.2 float I've just got four and on the 0.3 rig I've got six the floats on both of them are these Drennan AS4s in a 0.2 light like, say on this rig and a 0.3 on the other as you can see a nice short hollow bristle really buoyant um, and I've gone for a bodied pattern today purely because of the skim on the water and the fact it's moving normally the rigs I'll use are these sort of rigs with dibbers but they're much better in sort of three foot or less occasionally you can get away with them in four foot but as I say today with the wind I want a bit of body there to hold on to so a carbon stem basically these rigs it's more a case of just laying the rig in and because you're fishing a heavy hook bait that'll register on the bristle and just lifting and dropping so there's no need to fish a wire stem and wrist tangling I've got three number eight back shot, which is what I need for when I'm fishing right up to the stanchions because it'll keep the line away from looping over any wood that's sticking out. And then at the top end, as I say, an eight to 12 solo elastic, nice and simple and Dacron connector. And that's basically the rigs I'm using there today. So we'll get back out there and see if we can get a couple more fish. Right, so I've just put the rig into position now because I'm fishing at an angle towards these stanchions on this 13 meter line. I can't go laying the rig out completely because I've, I can't really drag the rig as close to the stanch as I want. So what I'm doing is laying the hook bait out sort of six inches to the left and then slowly lowering the, um, the strung out shotting down just so I've got the worms falling nice and slowly towards the bottom and as I said, gives the fish plenty of time to have a look at it. And then by using those heavy back shots as well, I can just put the pole to the right of the float in this case, with a bite and a small fish on. I can put the pole to the right of the uh, the float, so nearer the feature, and those three number eight back shots will just help it pull towards the feature a little bit more. You know, that's one of the small chub that I was on about. So that's one of the reasons why I'm not fishing or feeding too much caster in the, um, in the feed. Nice little fish, but not really what we're after today. As I say, we're really targeting the perch if we can get them. And if we're lucky, we might get a slightly better stamp chub. The option I've got, at least with the, the hook baits and the rigs I'm using today, is if those chubs start to really become a problem on the, the dendrobrina, then I can just switch to, say, the tail or the head of a lobworm. But I'll give it a short while before I try that. I want to just try and get a few fish in the peg and start to build an, an idea of what's in front of me first. Again, what I'll probably do is if I get, say, two or three more fish out on this line, then I'll switch back to my 11 metre lines and just rotate them that way. Then it just becomes quite a simple process of trying to suss out when when's best to top up. Again, because there's a lot of those small chub in here, I don't think it'll take them too long to go through the bait, so I'm not too worried about feeding what would come across as large quantities of, of chopped worm. Gone on places like the, um, the Uddersfield Narrow Canal where we fished before, if you're putting in sort of big pots of chopped worm, it's not really ideal because you're fishing for, say, one or two quality fish, but not in not in the context of having a lot of small fish in front of you that are going to take the bait. Whereas here, it's full of small fish, small chub, dace, roach, and things like that, so you need to put in a decent quantity. 
Right, so there's another fish now on the right hand of the, uh, the worm lines. I've had quite a few of this size so far, just one or two sort of slightly better fish, sort of over six ounce, but we've, we've been ticking over catching the odd one of these, sort of two to three ounce perch. We'll just swing him in. I've also had one on a lobworm tail, but again, that was only sort of three, three ounces or so. But we'll keep plugging away, probably about halfway into the session now. So I suspect as the day goes on, the fishing should get a bit better and the perch should start to line up a bit more. But it's been pretty much the same, we've topped up three times in total now since the initial feed. And it's just been pretty steady all day in all fairness, it's just been a case of ticking over, catching two fish off each line and just rotating them that way. Best bait so far has been two, two halves of a dendrobina. That's what I've had most of the fish on. As I say, we've not had any of the big ones yet. What I've also done is I've, I've fed my line down to my edge, like I mentioned earlier. Just on a top kitten, top kitten one section, one and a half section, something like that, just down to my left. So that'll give me another option to go to. As I say, if it was a case of all catching sort of four or five fish each, sort of stint on each line, then I'd just concentrate on the three. But because I'm just catching sort of one, two, maybe it'll push three fish off each before I have to rotate. That's why I'm putting that fourth line down the edge, so we'll see if that produces a bit later on. So what I've also done is mixed up the feeding a little bit, so on the sort of my middle line, if you like, where I'm fishing now, I've put in a much bigger pot of worm and caster there. That was a bite that time. And on my right hand line, I've just put slightly less and again on my left hand line I've probably put, because it's a bit more towards the boat and in shallow water, it's slightly different there. I've decided to feed that pretty much as heavily as I have my middle line as well. Again, it seems I'm getting more bites where I've fed more bait, but equally I'm getting the odd more, well, one or two more chub and indications off the smaller fish there as well. As I said, I think it'll just be a case of rotating the lines, ticking over and hopefully nicking one or two better fish as they start to feed later on in the day. All right, so there's a fish off the, the middle line. Feels like a slightly bigger perch, this. I don't think it's over a pound or anything like that. It's definitely hanging down in the water a little bit better, so. I'd expect it to be four or five ounce, something like that. That's one of the nicer perch of the day, this one. Again, that's on the middle line where I fed a bit more bait. Just pop the landing net out of the way. I say when the float's going under, I'm giving it probably about a two second count, something like that, maybe a bit less before I strike, just to make sure that the perch is properly hooked. As you can see, that's a nice stamp perch, is that one. So we'll get him popped in the net. And I think that bait's good to go for another one. So hopefully we can catch one or two over a pound today, and if we're lucky, a two pounder, but we'll just have to see. And every so often, I'm just going to keep trying the lobworm as a hook bait, but So I'm catching fish of that sort of stamp on the on double dendrobina, I'm not too, or two halves of a dendrobina I should say, that I'm not too pushed as yet to go onto the lobworm. Right, now I've just dropped in on that right hand line and hooked a fish straight away. And it's strange with perch fishing, sometimes it can be like the flick of a switch and they suddenly start feeding. It's not fighting much this one. Oh, it's actually a big roach is this. It's 
not what we were expecting on the worm and caster, but that's a lovely fish. And interesting, that's the right hand line where I've put a lot more hemp seed in. So that could be the reason why this fish has sat down there. That's a lovely stamp roach, is that out of this canal? We'll get him popped in the keep net and see if we can get another. Right, so we're into the last couple of minutes of the session now and we've just looked to a small fish on the 13 metre line. I think we'll probably call this the last one of the day. The last hour's been pretty slow going to be fair. And I think I've just pretty much caught or spooked all the fish that I could do out of the peg. So we've not had a massive wait today, but hopefully a couple of things that we've run through. I'll just give you a bit of an idea as to how I go about fishing chop worm and cast on these sort of venues. So I think on another day we might have might have done a much better weight and unfortunately those sort of bigger perch the sort of pound and a half two pound fish haven't really shown but there's a nice small perch to finish the session on so what we'll do is we'll get the keep net out and show you what we've caught right so there you go that's our final net of fish all caught on the chop worm and caster not a massive bag of fish today um, as, as i said earlier none of the big perch have really shown we lost one earlier but it's one of those things on these sort of canals occasionally they can crop up and some days they just don't We've had some lovely roach on the uh, the worm as well, up to that sort of size. Really nice fish there. And biggest perch of the day, probably being sort of five ounces or so. One of these sort of sort of size fish, if I can get him out. You can see there, probably sort of again four or five ounce, something like that. So we've got a nice little bag of fish there. Some good quality fish, um, but as I say, none of the really big perch, which is a shame. But hopefully, there's one or two things that you can pick up from today's video on chop worm and caster fishing sort of the way that we fed the three lines and rotated around them it's meant that we've kept bites coming pretty much all day but as i say just no quality there really from what we were after um but it's been a good little day's fishing so we've had bites all day a few fish on the, the lobworm mainly on the dendrobina and as i say we'll get them popped back but as always from last cast thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on that next video